These are five do's and don'ts about masking your videos in Adobe Premiere Pro. So the first do is to do know where you can find the masking tools. If you're ever working with a clip and you highlight it and go to the effect controls panel, masking options are created under the opacity tab. So you can drop all these down if you don't see that. And you can go to window effect controls if you want to make sure that this panel is open. So you can choose to create an ellipse mask, a four point polygon or a free draw such as the pen tool. So in this case, since we're working with a round object, just clicking the ellipse mask will be a great start for us. The second do is to do understand and know that you have all of these masking options once you create a mask. So you see all of these anchor points in blue. I can pull and stretch on any of them. And I can also add new anchor points such as adding a new one there if I want to change the shape of this circle. And I can move the entire shape around. And then in the effect controls panel, I can choose the feathering, which is sort of how soft that edge is. And that's also represented in these dotted blue lines. You can also expand the mask out or in, which can be really useful when you want to catch an edge without changing every single anchor point. And you have the mask opacity, which is the opacity or how much is showing through. You also have this option for inverting the mask, which in this case is probably what we want to do because we're, we want to sort of punch out this hole of the sunglass lens. And there's the mask path, which I'll teach you how to use in a second. So the reason we see all of these points is because we're in the program window and we have our mask highlighted. Don't forget that. So if you're ever in the reference window, you might not be able to see things that might be confusing for you. And also black doesn't mean that this is filled in black. It just means there's nothing underneath. The black is sort of transparent. If I was to ever move this video clip to a, a layer on top like video track two and drag anything else underneath, that is what would show through, which is sort of the idea behind the masking. If you ever want to just see the transparency grid instead of black, then you can just click this little settings wrench and go to the transparency grid and check it on if you prefer to see things that way. So a big do is do use masking when it comes to simple objects such as this sunglass frame. Maybe don't try to use masking when it comes to more complex objects such as these people dancing. You know, there's so many gaps moving between the arms. There's uh, the hair is going to be difficult and it's just going to be a frame by frame nightmare for you. So understand the limitations of masking in Premiere. There are other tools in After Effects such as rotoscoping, which would be much more beneficial for you when it comes to really tedious things like this. It can be done if you want to go frame by frame, but you know, some things are going to be almost impossible and you'd, you'd be better off using the tools in After Effects. Also, don't try to use masking where other effects such as keying would work better. So just like rotoscoping might work better for those kind of masks. In this case, this is a clip with a very clear blue sky and it's almost acting like a green screen. And it would be sort of tedious to go mask out the edge of this building. And why do that when there's a tool already built for this in the keying effects folder, such as the ultra key, for example. I can just go to the effect controls here, grab a key color from the clip, and boom, all of that color of blue is immediately deleted. And we can we have all these options for cleaning up that mat, just sort of like the feather and the mask options that we have. And it works the same way. So I can now drag another clip underneath. In this case, we get this cool sort of sky replacement that happens, but it would be a very tedious job to go and mask this out frame by frame when you have these better options that exist for this case. So do and don't remember when to use masking and when maybe it'd be better to use rotoscoping or keying. So for this example, masking could work. Now, like I'm mentioning about animation and clip movement, there's two different kinds of clips that you're going to be working with, uh, stationary and moving objects. So let's say we're, we have a clip like this, for example, this coffee. This is pretty stationary. 
uh, the, the, the camera seems to be on a tripod. The cup is not moving within the frame. If I was to create a mask on this coffee cup, I'll drag it in, I'll invert it. Once I create that mask on any frame, it basically is going to work for the whole video. I don't have to do any animation or frame by frame tracking. And that's how you can create simple compositions such as this ocean within the coffee cup, which can look cool. However, what about when it works on one frame, but then the subject is moving or the camera is moving, all of a sudden your mask isn't in the right place anymore. Here's where I would recommend you do remember that you have the mask path options. So if I highlight the mask path, I can click on the stopwatch icon. I'm starting at the very first frame here just to keep track of things. That'll create a keyframe here in this position. And I can go through manually and just go forward a couple frames, put it back where it needs to be, go forward a couple frames and, and repeat. However, if there's a lot of movement, this might be very tedious like I was talking about earlier. So do remember that you can just press play here and track this selected mask. So Premiere doesn't have fully fleshed out tracking features like rotoscoping and After Effects, but it does have simple 2D tracking of just like simple positional movements in the camera, um, nothing too crazy. So this is what that looks like. You see all of these keyframes, every single frame are now there. And if I press play, it does a pretty decent job. Uh, I would adjust the feathering a bit. This is also why if you do keep in mind the other options like mask expansion, you don't have to go back and adjust every single frame just to fill in that little bit of edge that you missed uh, since we've already animated it. So just a little bit of mask expansion or feather could fix up those problem areas that you want. And now if I drag another clip underneath, this does a pretty good job of masking while still following the path that we wanted to follow and you get your composition. But you see this whole effect sort of falls apart uh, as soon as the glasses come off her face, masking no longer works. So either we'd have to cut the clip or um, manually animate the mask at that point. Also do remember that simple masking can be the foundation for a lot of cool transitions in Premiere. So I have a tutorial all about this sort of mask wipe or linear wipe effect, but something like this is a simple straight line that moves across the entire frame that you can just mask and do some simple frame by frame or tracking and it can work great because we're not masking out strands of hair. So another tip to do remember is you know, I'm working here, I want to get the bottom of this mask, but my pen tool sort of turns off. That's where you want to change the view of your program window. So zoom out a little bit, um, maybe 50% here. That way I can still go past the edge of the frame and create that mask. And I can push the mask outside of the frame like I want and then connect that final point. And we have this mask. So I would just simply have to animate this. So do remember where you're starting on the timeline. In this case, I'm not starting at the very beginning. So I might have to track backward as well. So that backward play button. And in this case, it doesn't really make sense to do it automatically. I would probably just do this manually and I can create a cool sort of transition in this way. And if you want a full in-depth on that, I have multiple tutorials on mask transitions on my channel. Finally, don't forget that masks aren't just limited to opacity masks. If I go to almost any effect in the effects panel, for example, a tint, and I make some color tint, I can also create masks on the tint effect. So you see the same three options, and I can just mask the effect in a certain area. And that can allow for lots of creative effect possibilities. So for a quick summary, do use masking to select simple objects such as round sunglass shapes. Don't use masking to try to tediously frame by frame select objects that you just shouldn't try to do in Premiere Pro, like really fine details or fast, complicated moving things with many limbs. That's uh, something you should look into rotoscoping in After Effects for. Also, don't use masking where another effect such as luma keying or color keying would work better such as this sky replacement sort of idea. 
do remember where you're working on the timeline and all of your options for mask path, feather, and expansion, and things like that. Don't forget to be in the program window with your clip highlighted so you can see the mask in question. And don't forget to be able to zoom out if you want to be able to work with and expand the mask outside of the boundary of your program window. So if you found any of this interesting, I have tons of individual tutorials just on keying and sky replacement or just on rotoscoping and after effects or mask transitions for more examples on my channel. Go check those out with those keywords in the playlists. My name is Justin Odisho. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe to stay tuned for all my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.